So for your applique stitch, um, applique is when you attach the piece to the base of the stocking. So I came up just behind the blue here and your applique stitch is a hidden stitch. So you just kind of go underneath and you grab a little bit of, I'm grabbing a little bit of the gold and a little bit of the blue and pull it through. I'm working with a 18 inch strand of floss and then you kind of go when you come up, you go just to the right of that. You kind of hide your stitch, the applique stitch you don't see. Um, keep your stitches close together and even. And I've pinned my piece down. And when I get it all done, all the way around the edge, I'll stuff it from the top and then I'll close the top also. I do applique all the way around when I do this. So this is how you do it. Um, the patch that's on the top, I won't come through the patch, the red part, I'll still stay underneath and I'll get the blue. So this is your applique stitch and as you can see when you get, you can't see it, see my little knot there where I came up from underneath? I just tuck that under, but that's your applique stitch. If you prefer, instead of the applique stitch, you can also do the stab method too, where you come up from the back. And as long as you keep your stitches close together and you kind of go in on an angle, you can go all the way from front to back and you, you don't really notice. I do this for some smaller pieces. So I just get the edge of the blue and then I go back down. And that, um, that will hold your piece down also and your stitches will be hidden too. So there's sequence here, but I'll skip over to this part. I'm gonna line this anyway. So if I do the stab method, I come up on the piece that I'm gonna be um, attaching to. So I'll come up on the blue and I'll go back down to the gold. And as long as you stay close to the edge and go back on that angle, so you're like putting your needle sort of back under the blue to attach it so this is the stab method and you can do that just as well. Your stitches are still pretty well hidden. See there? So either way, either one, whichever is easier for you. Okay, here I'm going to show you how to do the cut tacked loop stitch. It's the stitch that looks like hay on the scarecrow and Christmas and Oz. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I'm doing um, his hand here. And I've got three strands of light gold floss on my small needle. I've got it at 18 inches long. I've left the hand unattached here so I can run my stitches through there instead of going all the way to the back. So the first one you see, I made a loop and then you tack it down. So I'll do the second loop. You can make these um, as long, as short as you want. If they're too long, you can always trim them at the end. So here's gonna be my loop. And then to tack it down, I'm gonna come right next to where I did my other um, loop. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna tack that down. Tacking it down makes it so your loop doesn't move, you know, it's secure. So again, I'm gonna come right up next to where I did that last tack, make the loop. Like I said, if you make it too long, you can always trim it later. And then tack it down. And then, when I get all the way across, which I'll show you now, when I get all the way across, I'm gonna cut these loops. And I'm gonna leave mine a little bit long because I like the way it looks. So it looks like, you know, the straw sticking out or the hay sticking out from his um, shirt. So that's how you do the cut tacked loop stitch. These are from the old instructions from the Christmas and Oz. I have the new instructions and I really like the way these are written. Um, they have the little check marks. So as you go, the little squares, you can make little check marks as you go along. Um, it's all on one sheet. I do like the new instructions much better. So I've actually been kind of comparing and going back and forth, um, but they're all, each character, it's listed. Each one is, you know, alone listed so you can follow and do each character there you go 
So I'm at the part where I need to make the cording to go around the waist on the scarecrow. The instructions say after you sequin and applique the shirt, you make the cording. It says to take um, six strands of gold at 12 inches long. I made mine um, a little bit longer. I think I have about 14 inches. Um, I'm going to make cording. So how I do that is I hold it between my finger and my thumb on both hands. And then with one, I just will twist. And I will just twist until... I get it twisted enough where it looks like it'll make good cording. I twist it quite a bit. And then I use like the tip of my scissors to put the cording underneath it. And that'll hold it so I can bring the ends together and then let it twist up together. So I have the instructions here and it tells you how to attach the cording to your scarecrow. I'll trim off this end here just a little. I kind of want to leave like so it looks like a little bit of a tassel at the end. So I'm going to leave this kind of long. So like that. So your instructions say you need a big, a really big, um, big eyed needle. And it's not included with the kit, but I have one here. It's a like a tapestry needle. It's got a really big eye on it. So that will let you um, put your cording through the eye here. And then the instructions say to go in one side of his waist, come out the other. And then we're going to tie these two ends together, but before we do that, it says to knot this end also. So I'm going to knot this end and um, leave a little bit at the end there so I can make it look kind of like a little tassel at the other end. So I'm going to tie these two together just in a knot. And then once I do that, I'm going to want to keep the cording on the dashed line that's there. So this is how I do that when I do cording and I need to attach it. So you can kind of see where the twists are in the cording. So I'm just going to follow that. So like for this first one, come up from the back. I've just got a single strand of gold on my small needle that comes with the kit. And I'm just going to kind of follow that line. You can see where the two are twisted together. If you pull it tight, you can hide your stitch so it's not, you know, messing up the cording or anything. You still have the twist in the cording. You're just kind of putting your stitch right on that twist there. And that'll help to keep it in place. I'll do this like every twist, every other twist. It doesn't matter, whatever you think looks good. So on the other side here, see if I didn't that stitch in you could see the dashed lines you just need tiny little stitches you don't need to make really big ones just little and that's how you keep the cording on the line stay in place. I'll do one more right here. Go and then on the back I'll just uh, knot it a few times and cut it off. And there's his cording.